lagi yang akan memenuhi seruan ilahi di mana jiwa para pemuda berani menjual diri untuk surga yang abadi. I don't think it's our job to spread the hate messages, the violent messages that they are uh, spreading. Uh, we have a bigger responsibility than that. Uh, it's, the question is, is it newsworthy or not? Uh, it is only newsworthy if it has, a, you know, we look at the bigger picture. So we would report about the hate messages in the bigger context that, you know, historically these groups have been violent, uh, they don't believe in democracy, they don't believe in freedom. In that context, you would actually uh, publicize the their, their messages to, to tell the public that you know, here's a very dangerous organization and, uh, and then be careful. This message, this message I deliver to you, the people of America. I deliver this message to you, the people of Britain. And I deliver this message to you, especially the people of Australia. And I say this about your coalition. You threaten us with this coalition of countries. So censorship doesn't work for a number of reasons. First of all, if you censor content and accounts and take them offline, you simply push them into other fora that are private, um, closed, and they won't get exposure to other views, nor will they be able to be visible to journalists or intelligence agencies who might want to see those point of views. Furthermore, when you censor, you create a very negative precedent. Because if you choose to censor only extremist speech, well, today maybe it's ISIS, tomorrow maybe it's a political opposition party, and you create the infrastructure and processes that enable censorship to continue. You create a chilling um, effect and you undermine the legitimacy of freedom of expression. Good evening. Jakarta is a city in lockdown tonight after a series of explosions and bloody gun battles on the streets of the Indonesian capital. Jakarta's busiest area descends into panic. <laughs> The blast hits a Starbucks cafe just before midday. Reports of suicide bombers inside. If you look at the impact of what they have produced compared to their budgets, and then you go and compare it with what Western governments are spending on so-called CVE programs and, and, the, and these budgets, you will realize that um, uh, ISIS is, is far more effective, far more efficient because they're having a larger impact on less money. And so that's like sort of the business, like if you look at a business analysis and you make a comparison, um, if I were an, like a, uh, an angel investor, I would go with the ISIS model because it's a lot more effective. Like for a million dollar, um, for a million million dollar investment, I end up like attracting something something like twelve to fifteen thousand foreign fighters. That's an amazing return on on on, uh, on the initial investment. And uh, as you know, our country is at war reflecting a range of perspectives in society, providing a platform for democratic public debate, providing a space where a variety of voices are heard, including those who are most economically marginalized, politically marginalized. The people who have grievance feel at least that they are being heard and that they have a way to communicate their perspective. Now, I don't know if that reduces or, 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 or stops violent extremism, but I am convinced but if you like it, it creates a hostile environment for extremism to take place. It makes it more difficult for those who are trying to um, recruit people into violence to, uh, to do so. So uh, the session we've just had on, 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 on violent extremism, I think legitimates the continuing relevance and role of an independent media, and particularly an independent media that pays attention to uh, a range of perspectives and, and, and fact and, and, and actually reports for truth um, uh, rather than any one side.